Hi everybody! Good morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you're watching me from. My name is Sally Roper and I'm coming to you from Ocherias in Jamaica. I am right now going to make a little snippet of a small video and show you how I make this ripple mug and um, let's get started. Okay, I just use um, a square bat. I leave these on the bat until they get um, a little drier so that I don't knock them out of shape. I wet the bottom. I have a already measured out it's 14 ounces of clay I could probably do with a little bit less um, but these are our larger mugs they probably hold between 12 14 mm, probably 14 ounces of, of coffee or tea or soup whatever you want to use them for right now I am just centering this ball of clay uh, no good pot starts with a ball of clay or a, that is not centered very well. And this is the process I use. I test my finger on there and as long as I can feel it running smoothly, I know my clay is centered. Then I'm going to make a small little well in the middle of the clay. This is just a, I'm just going to go at real speed here because my videos tend to get very long winded and I stop and start and explain and teach and really I just want to show you how I do it. So I'm going to measure the bottom of my pot. It's perfect. Creating the base of this. I call it a pot even though it's going to be a mug. That's just out of habit. Every piece I make is a pot until it's finished. I lubricate the sides. Now I'm going to start to build the wall. A little bit of a wobble. I'm not going to worry about that right now. This is the gauge that I'm throwing to. Uh, this gauge I bought from an Englishman named Darren Ellis. It cost me a lot of money to get it over to Jamaica, but I'm really glad that I did. So now I don't have to worry about measuring using rulers or anything like that. All I need to know is that I need to throw my pot to this pointer. And because I've already made about 12 of them, I know that this gauge is the correct gauge and this amount of clay I have is the right amount of clay. And let's see if I can get rid of this wobble now. I'm concerned about the wobble. I make these just like a cylinder. I would make a cylinder straight up and down. Okay, wobbles come back. That's okay, it's because I just nicked it with my hand. So you can see I'm almost at the gauge. I'm gonna do one more pull. And then if I feel that this pot isn't going to work, um, then I'm just gonna start again because even though it might feel okay in the throwing process, it's as it fires and goes through the rest of its... Um, oh, I don't know what the word is I'm looking for. The rest of its process, I guess. Yeah, it's giving me a little trouble. Now, it's too high, so I'm going to trim off a little bit off the top. So 14 ounces is too much clay for this pot. I'm making it uh, three and a half inches wide and four and a half inches tall. Accounting for 12% shrinkage. Right now I'm just carefully working on the rim. I seem to have saved this pot somehow. Just by not overworking it. Sometimes you can salvage your, your pieces. Sometimes you just can't, no matter how I work on it, how I try, nothing's gonna get it to where it needs to be to become a good pot. 
And you just chuck it and start over. The amount of time it takes me to really work hard on a pot that's not well made, I can just make another one. Okay, so here we go. I have this cylinder that's been made. I don't need to take out a ruler. I don't need to do anything. My gauge is telling me that it's at the right place. So I don't need my gauge anymore and now it gives me the freedom to move around my pot. I have a little bit of, of um, moisture in the bottom so I need to take that out. And now what I'm going to do is just tidy up the base. My pot is made. And I make a little bevel on the bottom. I'm not going to be doing any trimming. I might trim the base of this pot, but I'm not gonna do any trimming on the side. So I wanna throw it to its correct width, which I have done. Again, just make sure I get this moisture out of the bottom of the pot. I gave it a little knock off center. So let me see if I can just get it back to round again. Good. And I use my little chamois. I got this from, um, I don't know if you can read that. It says WYSIWYG Tools. And it's a great little chamois. It sits on a floater and it just sits in my bucket of water until I need it. I don't have to go digging for it, looking for it, finding it or anything like that. It just sits there at the top of the water until I need it again. Okay. So the mug is made. Now I just need to shape it. Sorry for my arm getting in the way of the picture. Anyway, I'm just gonna lubricate it a little bit. Just makes it a little bit easier. I don't wanna throw this pot off center after all the work I did to save it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, it's almost like crimping the top of a pie or something like that. My inside hand is gonna push out. These two fingers are just gonna hold the wall fairly steady and I'm gonna just make the bulge and I'm gonna do four of them as I go down the pot. So I start a little bit below the rim because I'm going to I'm going to actually pull out the rim a little bit. So I start a little bit below the rim. And I'm just pushing out with my right hand. And then I go down. And I lift my hands off slowly. You don't want to do this too quickly because you don't want to throw your pot off center, which is easily done when you're doing this. And then I come back up to the top and I just give it a little bit of a, a little bit of a what? I don't know what I want to say. Um, a little bit of a flare, which makes it comfortable for the mouth to sit on the edge of this. Just refine it a little. I don't need to fuss with it too much more. Smooth out the edges. And that's it. It's made and what I'm gonna do is attach a handle to it. So I leave it on the bat. I don't wire it off yet. I wait until it's had a chance to dry for maybe about an hour, hour and a half. And if I run the wire off now, I risk um, I risk mis it going out of shape and I don't really want to do that. So I don't mind waiting an hour. It just sits on the bat, which is why I do it on the bat. And there you go. So we'll just quickly do the next one. I'm going to drop this down a little bit so you get a little bit of a, a, little bit of a more side on view. Okay, and I'm going to go pretty quickly on this one. I'm going to go at my normal speed. If you have any questions, put them in the... Just ask. Put them in the comments. Again, this is what we're making. Can you see it? Uh, yeah, you can see it there. Okay. Everybody has their own technique for centering a ball of clay. I've uh, adapted mine from watching, I watch a lot of um, other people making pots. 
Some I watch ardently, others I just catch them when I can. But like in anything else, it's a skill. You have your own way of doing it. Everybody has their own technique that works for them. But at the end of the day, we all achieve the same thing. We get a good pot. Again, I'm just flaring out, making a well in the bottom of the pot. I'll measure the bottom to make sure I have enough clay. I do, perfect. I still have to measure. I think probably all my potting career, I will always measure the bottom of the pot. This. I just compressed the clay on the bottom so it won't crack. This mug serves no purpose. No, a coffee mug serves no purpose if it's got a crack in the bottom and then it becomes a pencil holder. This is just thinning out the walls of the clay. Set my gauge. Now I don't have to think about how tall or wide or whatever. All I want to do is bring this edge up to, up to my pointer. Squeeze the clay at the bottom and I just holding my hands very steady. I just pull that clay up the pot. Look at that, in one throw, I've reached my height. Again, I wanna get this excess water out of the bottom. It'll weaken the clay if I leave it in there. Okay, it is a little thin, so we need to widen it just a little bit. I'll do it a second pull. Okay. Again, I've gone a bit tall, which is telling me I'm using probably too much clay. So I could probably knock off maybe an ounce or two, maybe 12 ounces would might be a good amount of clay. All I do, that little move I do, let me just show you, I just take my needle tool and I lightly impress it into where I wanna cut off the top and then I just move it across slowly till it touches this finger here and then I just lift off the excess. So again, I'm not worried that, that I have made this pot too tall. My gauge will get it to the right height so it matches the others. It's a set. This is a commissioned order that I'm doing. So I wanna get it right. Now all I'm gonna do is just compress the, compress the clay and get rid of my throwing lines on the outside because I'm not going to be trimming the outside because of the ripples that I put in. And I can also use my metal rib, which I did not do on the last one. I just go up the side. I'm going to scrape off all that excess thing. You can see all this excess slip, which I don't need. Again, I want to take out the extra moisture in the bottom of the pot. Music's going to get pretty loud in the background. I live by the sea. I live by a resort, and they have a party boat that comes in around this time every day. louder and louder as well, hopefully I'll be finished the video in no time and I'll be finished the video in another minute anyway there you go I just make the little bevel on the bottom everything is ready to go uh, get my chamois and just make a pleasant rim after all this is where the mouth is going to touch the mug so you want that to be very pleasant to the to the person who's using it Okay, 
And this is just lubricating the pot so my hands don't stick on the clay and knock it out of line. Okay, let's go. Again, I'm pushing out with my right hand into the space that I've made with the fingers on the left hand. And then I just go up to the rim and I just flare the rim out to match. And that little curve that happens right in here is going to be really pleasant. That's it. Just tidy it all up, get the excess water off it, and that's it. This is what it's going to become. Thank you all very much for watching. It's 15 minutes of your time spending with me. I thank you very much. If you like the video, please say you like it. And um, if you want to subscribe, that would be great too. So have a wonderful day.